Yeah, Greg, you're the other founder of Backyard Brains. It's yeah, a pleasure to have a, you on. You, you have probably the most popular booth. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we have fun with it. Cause we, uh, I don't think we take ourselves too seriously, yeah, uh, yeah. which is uh, something that I think a lot of scientists are a bit guilty of. And so, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so we had, uh, we had fun. We were doing some, some demos. Uh, and I actually brought some demos today Excellent. Uh, to, to Excellent. show you. So you wanna, do you want to yeah. see what Backyard Brains is all about? Let's do it. Let's okay, check it let's out. Let's just go do it. All right. So I have here... I brought some of our, our kits. I didn't bring the cockroaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't sure what you didn't uh, want to bring like SFN would bring into the lunchroom. So, uh, <laughs> so what I did. So you are gonna you're gonna represent the cockroach today. Okay. Right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna record the output from your brain now. Okay. So I'm gonna need your arms. So okay. Give your arms. So I'm gonna put some just some electrodes that have a little bit of uh, you know salt water gel on the bottom of this. Okay. Allow the electricity that's gonna flow from the muscles that are connected to your neurons and your spinal cord up to your brain. And we're going to be able to record the output of those, like so. And so, um, okay. So you've put you've put these uh, pasty put, things. Yeah, on put my space. So basically, the idea is we want to go whatever. This is we're going to record around uh, two points. We have two kind of uh, red electrodes here, which I'm going to place around the area of interest. So this is going to be across There's this some alligator clip on yeah. these on these things. And then I'm going to place another alligator clip on the back of your hand. And then, uh, so, because we don't think there's a muscle back here, but we're really going to try to record between these two points, and we're going to listen to what your brain sounds like uh, when I go ahead and turn this on. So, I say it's a bit of a biohack, but you can kind of get it. So, when you go out to your, just squeeze your hand. That's cool. It's like an electrical storm. Flex, I'm flexing now. And releasing. Voila, yeah. Flexing. So it's kind of cool. So it, it's, it's, it's not quite your brain, but it is, you know, one level removed. Flex, 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 flex. Yeah. <laughs> so you can talk that way, like <laughs> two, two for yes, one for no. Um, so we can do like, so you're, you're, you have the largest neo, uh, cells in the neocortex are called the BET cells, and they're living right up here in the motor cortex, and those will synapse on your spinal cord. And then from the lower motor neuron comes out and innervates these muscles. And what we're actually recording from is the action potentials inside the muscles, mm-hmm. you know, the motor action potentials. That's called the electromyogram is what mm-hmm. we call that. But it's fun because now this is the way because, um, you know, you're interested in, in brain-machine interfaces and kind of neural interfaces. But uh, as, as you see, it's pretty hard to put electrodes inside the brain. Um, it's hard to even more so to get an EEG signal to control much, right? Uh, so the, all those things are, uh, are basically, you know, attention. And so you can control attention a little bit and, and be able to control one degree of freedom, maybe two degrees of freedom. But to do really rich uh, multi-degrees of freedom, you kind of need to either go directly into the brain or to record from muscles. And so those are two ways that we're doing that. So do we, do a, we have a DIY version, so kind of what we do. <laughs> At back our brains is we kind of make DIY versions of kind of you know graduate level uh, techniques and research tools uh, and experiments, and so we made a DIY brain machine interface which I brought in as well. Okay. And so that EMG signal uh, that you had uh, before is now going to be converted into uh, uh, some electricity that's going to con- be controlled by a uh, microprocessor an Arduino, and it's going to be able to do things in the real world. So if you, if you squeeze your hands right now, you're going to see that you're, you're controlling uh-huh. a bunch of LEDs. So this is kind of like the, the hello world of physical computing. The first thing you want to do is make lights turn on. So mm-hmm. that's not that interesting. Uh, it doesn't quite uh, you know fire the imagination. But what we can do... Maybe we can add a robotic claw to this. So now what uh-huh. I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a robot claw. I'm going to have you hold this. Actually, I can hold it. Okay. Your hands are full. And when you're ready, I want you to squeeze your hand open. You're going to notice. Oh. Yeah, so this is sort of the equivalent of a brain-machine interface. There you go. So there you go. So when you're, when you're, when you're forcing your hand to close... It causes the EMGs to fire, which will then allow the ro- robotics can to, to open. So that's the idea. Cool. So that's it. So this is a very basic tool of what you know Tim and I did in grad school, which is basically making brain machine interfaces that record from the from the neocortex. Uh, we record record from the motor and sort of premotor areas, uh, but. This is a lot simpler and doesn't require me to drill a hole in your head. <laughs> Which people are happy for. That's the second date. <laughs> That's the second date, yeah. So then what we can do is one of our uh, little popular demos 
is you, you take it one step further. So you heard their EMG, mm-hmm. you know, that, that rushing sound. So that's what's going on in your in your brain. So what we can then do is we can make a copy of that inside the um, the microprocessor and then pass it in to me hmm. such that your brain will be controlling not only your arm mm-hmm. uh, but also my arm at the mm-hmm. same time. So I can stick some electrodes oh, wow. onto my arm. This really does sound like second date stuff. <laughs> yeah. This is, <laughs> we're going to know each There's other. There's no bodily right? fluids yeah. involved, is there? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put some electrodes on here and then... Uh, I'll plug in. This is just basically we modified a TENS device uh, to basically connect to the Arduino. So we're going to control this from your EMG, and we're going to allow you to uh, sort of take over my free will, and you will move my arm when your arm moves. When your brain commands your arm, it will then take over my arm. All right, so I've clicked them up. And so what I'm doing here, this is the ulnar nerve. This is like the, you know, the funny bone you hit on the table. Mm-hmm. And, 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 feels funny, right? Mm-hmm. Because, um, so what we're doing is, is it comes really close to the surface of the skin. Uh, and so that's why it's a good nerve to hit. And, but it also comes and it innervates these fingers right here. It comes around like this, and it will make these fingers kind of turn. So by having um, the TENS device on there, when your EMG fires, we're going to feed it into here, and it should cause these neurons to fire. So not only your brain will fire your muscles, we'll also fire my muscles. And we'll see what happens when they hook us together. So that's what I'll do right now. Okay. Will I feel anything, or is it just a one-way No, thing? it's a one-way, yes. Yeah. So we could. Uh, maybe we could do two of them next time, and then uh-huh. we can fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> can you cool. control it, like, from your side, or what? So we can do. So, so I have a little thing here, which I'm just going to turn it on, and I'm mm-hmm. just going to look away whenever okay. you're ready. I don't feel it yet. Okay, I'm starting to feel it. All right, so now if you want to curl it, so, like, <laughs> so you can't, you don't, you don't see. I don't, I'm not looking at all. Yeah, so you can do it. So this is a. Uh, <laughs> it actually, it, it it feels. We can switch it around. If you want to, if you want to. Yeah, I want explain to, to the viewers. Just, maybe it's a scam. You know, yeah. you got to make sure this is legit. So for for science purposes, I'm going to switch it around. And what I'm going to do is I'll hook up myself. So I'll be the controller, and you'll be the mm-hmm. controller. So it feels a bit funny. Um, so go ahead and give me your answer. I'm going to hit yours. I didn't put you on the ulnar nerve. I'm going to just unplug this for a second. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm going to move your electrodes over to sort of here and here on the back side. And then I'll be the controller. Now. Okay. I'm taking over the, the reins of your free will. Uh-oh. All right. Your agency is now mine. <laughs> All right. So I'll put this on here and here. So now I've hooked you up to the to the stimulator, and I'll be plugging into the other side. So, let's see. so I'm just put the electrodes on my muscles. One, two, and three. And I'll make sure that mine works. And I'll turn you on. All right. All right, so that's where you. So I'm going to go and turn it on a little bit slow. So when I do it, ooh. <laughs> just relax. Relax. All right, relax. I felt like electricity going in my head. All right, so I'll just relax your hand. Ooh, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is live. We're doing live. Right, do you want me, is it too high, you think? I don't know. I don't know. Just relax. All right, just leave your hand okay, down. Okay. Just keep it there. So where is it? Where, where do you feel it? Do you feel it in these fingers? Yeah, right yeah. It, it's a... Uh, yeah. It's a tingly. It's tingly, yeah. I'm going to try just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Permission? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh there okay. it goes. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, okay, but so I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it, right, but you believe it. I believe it, yeah, Okay, yeah. all right, that's cool. Yeah, so it this moved, is what we do. my hand. <laughs> it did move your hand. So what, this is the type of stuff we do. We try to take, uh, you know, functional electrical neural stimulation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what, this is what this is. Uh, mm-hmm. It's being done in, you know, at Case Western, and uh, there's a FEN center that, mm-hmm. that focuses on this. But all these tools are kind of things that, that uh, you know, Tim and I did in grad school. Mm-hmm. Recording from neurons, recording from muscles, but we've tried to figure out ways to make them a little bit more uh, kind of interactive and, and more accessible to, to mm-hmm. everyone else. It's like there's only one switch on our devices that allows you to, to turn it on, so that makes it uh, kind of more simplified and allows, hopefully, uh, a new generation to actually start using these tools, start answering some questions about the brain, start publishing these things, and become scientists themselves. Yeah, exactly, because this can be used, I mean, even kindergartners theoretically or like yeah, elementary so, I mean, school. Uh, we, we used to begin at fifth grade. 
because we were doing cockroaches um, and doing surgery and stuff like that. And then uh, once we started doing the muscle stuff, we never went back and kind of you know thought about it again. But yeah, definitely, uh, you know, like a like a kindergartner can put electrodes on and understand because mm-hmm. it's it's no longer. I'm thinking about another animal model that's like me. It's actually me now. And so I think that, uh, I think starting from kindergarten on up, people are going to really start to do hands on electrophysiology and neuroscience. So. <laughs> Sounds impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's almost like a, you have to declare a major in, in kindergarten or something. Yeah, like no, that. yeah, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's not good, you know? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've been working on a bunch of new stuff. We have, uh, we have recent release. So you saw the human to human interface, mm-hmm. and we, we, we were wondering if there's a way that we can do this other things and so mm-hmm. we have a plant to plant interface uh, this is recording from action potential within plants and so uh, sensitive mimosas or um, bashful plants or touch me nots are called uh, these are plants when you touch their leaves they'll curl up mm-hmm. but do you ever wonder how do they do that isn't mm-hmm. that curious uh, these are very animal like behaviors in plants mm-hmm. and so it turned out that they have animal like touch receptors in the mm-hmm. leaves and they'll fire uh, electricity which causes water Water to leave cells. Uh, these aquapores open, voltage sensitive ones, cause conformational changes, and leaves will curl up, and even branches will move. Um, and then, so the other thing uh, we've been playing with is, is working with Venus flytraps. And the hairs inside the Venus flytrap are trigger hairs, uh, almost like the cockroach light. When you touch mm-hmm. them, they fire action potentials. Uh, but they do it in a very interesting way. So if you open up the, if you have a, a leaf that's open, and you place an electrode on the outside of the leaf, mm-hmm. and you put the ground in the ground and you um, record and you touch one of the hairs, you get this huge act potential, but the leaf doesn't close. And so to look at that, why that is, it takes about 24 to 40 hours for that leaf to open back up again. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, it, it wants to make sure there's a fly in there, unlike the mimosa, which I mean, pops back up in 10, 10 minutes. And so mm-hmm. it really wants to make sure it has a meal. And so it starts counting the number of seconds between pokes. And when it gets two of them in a row, it's, it snaps shut. So mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. So uh, then what we do is we take the output Axe potential from the Venus flytrap, and then we send it into the Mimosa pudica so that all the branches will move when it receives the spike from the Venus flytrap. Hmm. So we call this, I think it's our, the first artificial plant to plant communicator <laughs> in the history of mankind. Interspecies, you were saying. <laughs> Interspecies too. plant to plant. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I wanna, yeah we don't want to cut ourselves short <laughs> here, you know. So, anyway, so these are the, the fun things. We, are, we have some new projects we're working on with some uh, weekly electric fish. Uh, some squid and octopus things, and so hmm. yeah, look for look for us in the in the in the months and years to come. Yeah. We are, we're trying to come up with some crazy some stuff, new like creative this. stuff. How about how about like a plant to animal something like this? I'm trying to think. We did do once we did an, a, a human to plant. Okay. So we did take the EMG output mm-hmm. and feed it into the mimosa. So like squeeze twice. Yeah. No. This is this is on the mimosa, which just needs one. Okay. Uh, so okay. That's a good one. Yeah. Can I have that yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We never actually did. We never did a. Uh, we never stimulated from a, a, a Venus flytrap back to a Venus flytrap. We got uh-huh. cool. so We should maybe do that one. So. Yeah. Yeah. So there, what I'm thinking is you like, could do a matrix. Like, you know, yeah, cockroach. Like a daisy plant. chain. Yeah, of, of oh, these yeah, things. This, yeah, that's a good way. So, yeah. so go from like human to animal to human. Yeah, be like sorry, a, sorry, an, human an to plant to animal. Interspecies internet where yeah. they're passing <laughs> messages through action potentials. That's yeah, happen. exactly. So, so hundred <laughs> people will know. Like, yes. Oh, somebody squeezed their arm. <laughs> that's, kind of cool. that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, okay, so this is for um, students and everything like this. What um, I don't know, like. Uh, what kind of price range are we yeah, talking so, so about? So we try to keep our stuff uh, uh, low cost. So here we're, we're at the Society for Neuroscience, and uh, we always say, you know, we match competitor pricing uh, because uh, <laughs> no, because our we're several orders of magnitude lower than, uh, than okay. the commercial brands of these things. So uh, we try to keep around the hundred to two hundred bucks range okay. for our kits. Um, and we have some kits you build it yourself for less than fifty bucks, uh, yeah. and allows you to record from from living brain cells and in, in, invertebrates, so worms and cockroaches and crickets and that's pretty cool, squishy and crunchy things. So. And is it kindergartner proof? Uh, the, these are. So we did. Uh, we had, someone came up yesterday and asked me that, so I just dropped it on the ground and then I handed it back to him. Like, yeah. <laughs> Although with my my kids, I think you, you have to really smash it, and it probably isn't. Uh, it's not three or four year old proof yet. Okay. Uh, okay. Six six year olds. Six year olds. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, nice. Cool. This is cool. So what's what's next? Um, yes, yeah, so we have a bunch of new stuff planned. So we have. Um, uh, we're, we're interested in uh, possibly looking at 
uh, muscle fatigue um, in in space, and so hmm. we're in in discussions right now. Maybe sending our stuff into the mm-hmm. International Space Station mm-hmm. and be able to record the EMG as muscles fatigue and looking at the differences between exercise both on Earth and in space. Mm-hmm. I think that would be kind of a fun project. Hmm. Um, we have a bunch of uh, of uh, new projects we've been working with dragonflies, a recording mm-hmm. from the from the eyes that do all these beautiful computations to figure out where their targets are, mm-hmm. and they send them back to their wings through six. Teen neurons, eight on each side, that control their wing muscles, and so they have no choice but to capture and kill. So they're like a 98% success rate. Hmm. Given like lions and sharks are around like 40 or 50%. These guys hmm. are like absolute killers and they, they can do that because their brains are highly tuned so that when some, a little fly moves mm-hmm. they have no choice but to move back ways like this reflex arc. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've been studying those and trying to uh, come up with kind of DIY versions to do these experiments. So yeah, we have a uh, this next summer we're probably going to be working with uh, maybe ants and honeybees and understanding how their brains work. So yeah, if it's it's, it's fun to be cool. in backyard brain we just try to figure out the, the coolest and most creative things that we can do with it's our like time. It's like your job to be a kid. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's it. So, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> that, that, that would be like, um, I mean, I, I can imagine something like like you have these like predator insects, right? And and like you could control when it kills or something yeah, like this. Yeah, like, so we, you're we the actually one that, did that do eats that. the insect. We actually did do that. So we had a, a scorpion project. And we huh. were trying to get the scorpion to turn. And they have these little uh, kind of stretch receptors that would uh, can feel vibrations. They would turn towards mm-hmm. That was the goal. Mm-hmm. And so we were trying to, trying to get these, these things to uh, think something was moving and then give them. But what ended up happening is that they would uh, they would fire their uh, their stinger or their talon. So that they would, uh, depending on what species it was. And so mm-hmm. if they have smaller, you know, pinchers, they would they would hit with their with their tail. Mm-hmm. If they had bigger uh, talons, they would they would pinch. And so you can get these guys just to start pinching. So wow. like, yeah, it was actually kind of creepy uh, when, that, when that happened. That was a steep wow. pinching project. I will put a plug in. We have um, every summer. Uh, so the project that I mentioned, the electric fish project, uh, I didn't mention too much about it, but we do squid and octopus and uh, next year honeybees and ants. Each one of those is done by, not by us, but by an undergraduate or a mm-hmm. high school kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have an internship that will open at the beginning of, two, of next year, 2018. Uh, and so people should, uh, if, they're, if they're creative and they and they like doing things and building things and doing science, uh, so we, we take those projects and we, you know, kind of mentor them throughout the summer. But at the end, we, we want a publication out of that, mm. a peer-reviewed journal article, wow. uh, and then and then that's the that's the goal. So by an undergraduate or a high school, by an undergraduate or high school kid, and then we, we had a number of them be successful in the in the years past, and uh-huh. then we're working on manuscripts right now from last summer. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, if you have people that are listening right now that have uh, they know people around that age or maybe even high school teachers that want to get involved, uh, we'd be open for that as well. So. Cool, very cool. All right. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much Thanks for the for demonstration. Me. All right, cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> right,